everyone welcome back to the channel and i hope you're all doing freaking amazing today um today's video is going to be another tutorial to hopefully help you guys a little bit um i don't do a lot of tutorials and i feel like that's usually because i'm not the best at explaining what i'm doing like my process is very like sporadic and weird and random and most paintings don't go the same way if that makes sense see i'm already like kind of weird at explaining stuff but um i'm gonna try to do another one um, I think the last one I did was like an eye or a lip one. I'll link other tutorials I've done down below in the description whether or not they suck or not. But like, I really hope this is helpful to some extent. Um, and I'm going to be showing you guys in this video how I make the little magical, glowing, sparkly, wonderful acrylic effects that I try to add in most paintings. Just a simple way to blend out um, acrylics to make things look like they're glowing or um, like magical or something <laughs> um, like I'm also going to show you guys how I do the little sparkles that I do at the end of every painting of uh, those little like white or multicolored sparkly things so I'm going to show you guys how to make glowing effects pretty easily and you don't need a whole lot for this tutorial however I am going to recommend a few like important important things and if I miss anything I'll just clear everything up in the description down below and of course if you have any questions whatsoever while you're watching just comment down below and I will get back to all of the comments and questions and I'm also going to be giving away this painting at the end of this video so stay tuned and I will tell you guys how you can win this little magical mushroom 5x5 five five inch canvas. So for materials, you are going to be needing a little cup dish thing to put your water, which is self-explanatory, as well as something to put your paint on, so a palette. Okay, and I like completely forgot to put a little palette thing in the little photo thing, so ignore that. <laughs> um, and then the next thing you're going to need is some type of like neon or brightly colored acrylic paint. Most, if not all brands uh, that carry like a neon or bright colored paint um, it's going to be very transparent, and I don't think there's really any way around that. However, and if you, um, like, are an acrylic painter, um, you know the struggle of trying to paint a portrait and having your paint dry on you before you're freaking done, and then you have splotchy skin and just, it's a shit show. <laughs> um, so acrylics are really fast if you didn't know. So this natural transparency that the neon paints have, or just most brightly colored paints, you know, it's going to be used for advantage because it makes blending a lot easier. And you can always, um, dilute your paints with water to thin them out, or with a medium, I will recommend a few mediums down below that are good for glazing but um for the purpose of today's video i'm just going to be using this little cheap precious um little student grade set of artisoft neon paints that you can find at michael's or hobby lobby um but preferably michael's because hobby lobby isn't that great <laughs> okay you're going to need like brushes and that's again self-explanatory <laughs> but like any type of brush will really work for this i prefer for blending like filberts if you don't know what that is um it's like the little brush that has like the little hill shape i guess i don't know but like you could do all this with probably a little precious filbert and be fine but um just in general i get a lot of random brushes a lot of the brushes i've had are very old so they help with blending so the older the brush and the fluffier it is the better it is to blend in my opinion but you can just get a bunch of different types of brushes, especially if you are like new to painting all together and just want to paint stuff. Like you need some firm brushes, thin brushes, thick brushes, just a variety. Um, a lot of my brushes just come from like the bargain cylinder tube things that are like in Michaels a bunch. Like, it's like seven, ten dollars, and you get like a bunch of brushes in that little plastic thing. But like most brushes will work, and I know a lot of people say that like. I don't know, I feel like I'm one of those people where I can work with like most materials. I don't really care if it's expensive or not, but I'm sure expensive brushes are wonderful. I just don't take care of them good like enough to be able to justify getting expensive brushes because <laughs> my brushes are actual fish, like they're aquatic and they don't come out of the water, which is horrible, don't do that. Um, but yeah, any brush will work. Um, next you're going to need, and this is for mainly like the actual base of like the painting that you want to do, um, you just need heavy body acrylic paint. So you could use Liquitex Basics, you could use Artisoft, you could use Golden, which is my favorite. Anything will really work. And then you are also going to need, and this is optional, but this is like my favorite thing ever, um, like any type of fluid acrylic paint. And that's basically paint that's already been thinned down with medium. And, um... Golden makes really awesome fluid paints, so I recommend Golden fluid paints for signatures and sparkles and just doing really, really thin, precise lines because the paint is already perfect and thin and wonderful. And then the most important material out of all the materials and the one I'm going to recommend the most and the material you should like get on your little computer and look it up and buy it right now because it's amazing is zinc white. And if you don't know what zinc white is, it's like this really transparent white paint and Golden makes an amazing one. And if you're even thinking about trying acrylics and you want to blend and do all that cool stuff and do lighting zinc white is a must-have <laughs> and it's like not expensive it's like six dollars probably for a big tube or like nine dollars for a tube like it's not horrible and it lasts a very very long time and basically it's just perfect for tinting things lightening things very slightly um blending it's just all around like the best paint ever 
So um, I recommend gold and zinc white and that's like all you need. <laughs> like, oh my, you need a little bit more, but like zinc white's like half of the battle and that zinc white will make it so much easier and not have to take mediums or have it take thousands of years to freaking blend. So zinc white is a must have and I will put all of the materials in a more like clear list down below as well as like time things so that anyone who is not watching this can like not watch it because this is taking a long ass time um but yeah let's just get into the little tutorial and i will show you guys how to make some magical mushrooms and some magical sparkles Oh, also, <laughs> I completely forgot to put this. What the hell? Um, I, you need a canvas, obviously, or something to paint on. Um, I'm painting over an acrylic pour I did a few months ago. And um, if you want to know how to do acrylic pouring too, I have a video on that like from a while ago. So it's kind of cringy, I remember, I think. Um, but I'll link that down below too, so you can figure that out. But yeah, I'm painting over an acrylic pour. Here's the acrylic pour. And to start this little painting that I'm doing, um, I'm actually going to be starting with that fluid acrylic paint that's titanium white and just painting in what I want to make glow. So this is where you can paint whatever the hell you want. I'm doing mushrooms because mushrooms are pretty trendy and they are pretty popular right now and it's just a cool thing to make glow and I love mushrooms to paint <laughs> um, and like they're just fun. So I'm painting some magical mushrooms and I'm going to be blocking them in with the fluid titanium white. Again, live your life, paint whatever the hell you want and then I will begin the glowing effect. Oh, and guys, use reference photos. <laughs> um, if you are new to painting, or even if you're not new to painting, like, get a reference photo on whatever you're painting. Because for this, I was using a reference photo for the mushrooms. Um, and especially if it is something that is radiating light or something, lighting is kind of hard, and I'm not even that good at it. <laughs> this is kind of, like, a weird thing I do. But, like, find a reference photo that has good lighting. Find something that's glowing. If you're painting a light bulb, find a light bulb. If you're painting a magical mushroom, find a mushroom that you can paint. Like, it, you need a reference photo. And you may think that you don't need a reference photo, or that it's bad to use a reference photo but use your freaking reference photos. And if anyone freaking tells you that it's not good to use a reference photo, no. Use reference photos, because like literally you can think you know how something looks in your head, but you don't. <laughs> it's so it's annoying, but get a reference photo, find um, a reference photo that has good lighting, and yeah, I am going to begin the glowing. So for this part of the video, I am going to slow down to as close as I can to like real time if I'm not just doing real time. And I'm going to show you guys how to make the little glowing thing. So I'm using the zinc white only in this part. And this is a layering process. So you want to layer one layer of zinc white and then wait for it to dry completely and then do another layer because if you don't wait, it could underbind and you'll get craters. And I'm not even going to get into that shit because it's not fun and not cute. Um, but yeah, you need to take the zinc white and I'm doing this on a pretty dry brush, if not fully dry. And I'm scooping the little bit of zinc white up and I'm... I'm kind of like outlining the mushroom. Um, you put the little glob around the mushroom and then you take your brush. I am drying off all the excess paint and water completely from it. And then I'm quickly going and I'm going to do little circles around where I put the paint to try to blend it out as much as I possibly can. And the little circles will help hopefully make the blend easy. And like, cause like if you're going at this with violent strokes and hard pressure, like, no, that's not gonna work. <laughs> like, um, when it comes to the actual pressure I'm applying with the brush, it's very, very light and soft because you want this to be a very soft blend and the brush strokes, if they're super hard and rough, they're not gonna give off a super soft effect. Um, I am applying less pressure as I'm actually encountering like the paint near the mushroom and more pressure as I'm going away from it just to really blend it out and make sure it's completely like, dissipating almost. Um, but yeah, I'm just repeating that and it takes a while and it takes practice. So I recommend taking something that you don't really care about that much and practicing on it before you go ahead and try to apply it to a painting you worked really hard on. Um, cause it does take practice and this will take layers. But the good thing about acrylics is that if you F it up, <laughs> um, I saved myself there. Um, but if you screw it up, you can like go over it and let it dry and fix it. So no pressure. Um, that's probably gonna, that's not gonna help, but like, layering. I'm going to slow it down. Hopefully it looks cool and you can understand what I'm doing. And let's move on to the next part of the tutorial. Oh, and once I do that, I'm also adding little white highlights on the mushrooms. I think I go over it like four times with different highlights, but like, um, since they are going to be little enchanted mushrooms, I want them to look kind of glossy almost. So I tried to add a little bit of highlight, but when you are doing like an inner glow from something, sometimes the highlights can get kind of messed up and I still don't even understand how that works. Like, again, my lighting skills are not the best. My paintings are very like, like, the lighting's always magical and purple and magical and pretty, but, like, it's never, like, super realistic and there's never really, like, a focus on dramatic lighting, and I want to get better at that. Um, so right now I'm still kind of rough with, like, highlights and stuff. But yeah, I added those little white sparkly highlights in the mushrooms just to try to make them look even more magical, I guess. I don't know how many times I've said magical in this video. I should put, like, a little tracker thing because it's been 
way too many if that's even a thing because you can never have too many magical things okay next part of the tutorial um this is where i completely messed up wait just kidding that's a different part i watched it back and it's a different part okay so this is where i'm actually adding the color over top of the zinc white and you need to let this dry a lot like let it dry fully like give it like five ten minutes or whatever make sure it's not going to underbind and then take whatever color you're using um hopefully it's brighter again i'm using like a bright turquoise that i thin down with medium and water and that neon pink that is already super naturally transparent and you just glaze it over and it may seem kind of intimidating but in the video again i'm going to slow this part down too it's literally the same exact thing you did with the zinc so you take a glob of it and you swoop it over and you put it on the little canvas and then you just do the little circles until it fades out and hopefully again seeing it done like in real time helps a little bit because i feel like i'm not good at explaining things at all hopefully this is helping again this whole tutorial thing is weird um but yeah you just glaze the color over it and again yellows are great for this quinacridone magenta is awesome any type of student grade neon paint most student grade paints will do it no matter what color it is because they're transparent and kind of annoying so um yeah find your transparent pigment and just play with different colors and again i try to relate it to whatever color is actually glowing from within the mushroom or within whatever object i'm painting so if i'm doing like a glowing eye it's the eyes are bright purple i'm gonna make them glow purpley or if they're glowing bright yellow make them yellow and all that stuff so yeah i'm just glazing that color over where I'm completely messing up and this is where I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I try to do this little like vignette thing is that how you say it I'm guessing that's how you say it where you darken the corners of the canvas to bring the focus into the center and I did that but I didn't think it through and I covered my freaking pore so um the pore is gone <laughs> and that effect is lost but it's still cool to do stuff over pores but I do like it better without the pore I'm just bummed that I didn't get to use the pore because I really like the pore um, but yeah, I'm using a, like a dark violet. I think it's like um, diox, whatever it is, violet. And then um, a black, and I'm just going around the corners. And that's a great way to, again, create that glowing effect. Because if it is glowing, it's usually in like a darker area. So adding a dark background will really draw the eye to that neon awesome color and make the glowing effect even more like prominent, I guess. And I'm doing the same thing with this. I'm just putting it on the canvas and doing the small circles to blend it in. Um, however, I'm going to speed this up again to get through it. And then I decided that I was going to be stupid and I was going to make it busy and overcomplicated. And I added all these little twirly vine things and I hate all of them and they ended up going away. Um, so ignore everything I do right there. It's horrible and I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And when it happens, just ignore it because I hate it. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to come back when hopefully it's like better, I guess. But yeah, there's a whole shit show that happens and then it goes back to being simple. And as that's happening, I'm 
uh, the, with like the zinc white thing, you have to go back and you have to keep layering the color continuously, especially as you're going along with the painting. And as the painting changes, um, you're going to see stuff that you want to change and stuff that you need to fix. So as I'm doing all that shitty like vine work stuff, I'm seeing that the color needs to be brighter or I'm seeing that there needs to be more depth in a certain area, depending on what my mushroom wants to look like or what I want it to look like. Um, so I'm adding more purples in that pink one, taking more of that super neon hot pink and adding it around and layering. The more you layer the transparent paint, the thicker, more opaque and brighter it's going to be. So um, totally go through and um, layer as much as you freaking want because there's like no end to layering when it comes to acrylics. I freaking love it. So um, yeah, I'm just doing that as that's progressing. And then towards the end, I'm adding that little precious baby blue mushroom and then I'm going to be adding the sparkles to finish it up. Now the sparkles, I do the same in every painting and it's the same as you do with the mushrooms. So I'm taking a fluid titanium white and I'm speckling the little canvas with where I want the little stars. And the trick with these is that you don't want them all to be the same glow. You want them all to kind of have their own little differences in how they're flickering, you know? So some are brighter, some are duller. It's kind of giving off like a weird twinkling effect. Um, but you take your titanium white, you do your little dots, and then you take your zinc white, you do one little scoop of zinc white on each one and then you do little circles around that dot to blend it out if that makes sense again i'm gonna slow this one down in real time too just so that you can really absorb it and this video is gonna be like freaking like half an hour just because of how much i'm gonna slow down but i really want you guys to absorb how i'm doing it so you put the little zinc white down not zinc titanium white down zinc white on top of it and then circles around it until it blends out and you can layer that as much as you want i usually do about two layers on the bright ones one on the dull ones and then i go over each one again with another titanium dot once it's all said and done and then if i am finishing it um up and i do anything else to it which i actually haven't finished it as i'm recording this but i know what i'm gonna do to finish it i'm just gonna continue to deepen shadows and kind of unify everything maybe add some more lighting like more purple glazing on the stems and stuff but nothing too exciting so i probably won't explain anything else so i hope this was helpful and I actually am going to be giving away this painting to one of you. Um, so if you want to win this painting, and I've never done a giveaway before, I'm going to do a bigger giveaway to celebrate all the milestones I've passed in like the last year. So I'm going to do something big. I'm going to give away some original paintings. I'm going to give away some art supplies. And I'm going to do a contest, I hope. And I'm going to open Etsy soon. Like this summer, I want to get a lot done. However, I'm going to start it off by doing this little precious giveaway to give one of you guys this painting to tell you guys how much I love you. It will come with a note and maybe a print or two. Um, and if you want to win that little bundle thing, firstly, follow me over on Instagram. I will have the link to it down below in the description um, and then leave a comment down below if this was helpful or not and just tell me I don't know something interesting talk I don't know just comment I guess comment down below um, and also like the video and subscribe so um yeah if you like this video again please give it a like I love you guys so freaking much I will pick a winner for the giveaway within like the next week or two I'll put an official thing on Instagram about it um, and I'll also post this picture to Instagram to let you guys know over there how I'm going to be doing the giveaway. So I freaking love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions whatsoever, again, please let me know and I will get back to all of the questions in the comments and I will put the music in the description and all that shit down there. And I love you guys so much. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.